Hey guys, my name is Liam and you are watching Jeep Sheep TV. Today, I'm gonna to show you a very simple trick to increase the capacity of your Jeep Wrangler gas tank. I'm gonna be doing this on a 1994 Jeep Wrangler YJ. This may also work for the TJ model, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's dive right in. I want you to take a quick look at this tank and how it fits in the frame. Not a lot of space here, not a lot of space here, no space going up, and unless you get a different skid plate, no space going down. So how did they have an optional tank with a higher capacity? I think it was like maybe 20 gallons or something like that. How is that even possible? So the rumor is that they're the same tank and that this hose right here is the breather of sorts. This is what is going to send fluid back up when you're refueling to tell the pump to stop pumping. Rumor has it, this has a hose on the inside, which if you cut it shorter, you can fill the tank fuller and it becomes the high capacity tank. So the first step you're going to want to do is to remove your gas tank. In my case, I have the entire frame removed, but you can pop the gas tank out through the bottom, not a big deal at all. You just have to disconnect the hoses that are here, and it's probably two hose clamps there. And then you have this uh, vent hose here as well, and that just pops off, as well as this wire harness here. And all of this should be accessible from the driver's side of the Jeep. It'll just kind of go in here. There's a cover that belongs here, and you just remove those hoses and it's easier said than done because the hoses are usually stuck on but now you're going to want to take out your fuel pump and as you can see here mine's all sorts of corroded like everything and so i did spray penetrating fluid all over this and then the biggest issue i've had is the heads of these little screws or bolts they're more of a screw than anything um they were really corroded and it was really difficult to get a socket on them. See, kind of a screw. I guess it's a bolt. So what I did is I took a wire brush and I wire brushed the whole thing all over the place to get as much gunk off as possible. And then I took a socket and this one is a 932nd socket. I don't know if this is actually the right socket, but it's the one that worked. And I put it on here. The deep well helps because you can hold on to it and then you smack it with a hammer. And sometimes you have to do it a lot. Sometimes you don't at all. And uh, then you can get a good grab on those heads and pull them off. I do recommend running these all through a wire wheel and determining the correct socket for them and then maybe writing that down. So all of mine are loose. I'm going to take them all off and then we will remove the fuel pump. Also, I've started to clean the perimeter. We don't want to drop a bunch of gunk into the fuel tank. That would be bad. So just have a rag handy. Bolts are removed. Now we're going to pull out this pump. Okay, look at that guy. Oh, come on now. It's hard to do while holding on to a camera. Ooh, she's full of fuel. This is going to be fun. Look at that, look at that filter. This has not been removed since the Jeep was brand new, as far as I know. That is fantastic. Look at that guy. Wow. Carter, is that OEM? Or is this aftermarket? I guess I just don't know. Look at that beauty. So much cleaner on the inside, holy crap. Now we're gonna take a look inside and we're going to show where that hose is. So first off, you get this little tray in here, which I think is to help with stuff sloshing around. See, it's got a little bit of a bow to it. If these get warped too much, you will start having issues. I saw a forum post about it. I can't remember exactly what the issues were. I think it had something to do with your fuel gauge quite possibly, 
maybe your float is getting stuck on that box. I'm not having that issue, so I'm just not gonna touch it. But let's take a look inside here. And there we go. There's that hose. So you can see that once the fuel gets to like about halfway up the tank, it's gonna start filling that hose. And it's not gonna go all the way up to the top right away, but it, it's gonna start going up. So yeah, we're gonna shorten that hose just a little bit. And by doing so, we're gonna allow the fluid level to go higher before it starts feeding up that hose. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take our hand and we are going to shove it in here. And then we're gonna devise the best method of cutting that hose. Before we start cutting anything, let's try and think about what we're doing to the gas tank. So by rough estimation, this tank is like 475 fish square inches, okay, across the top here. So I, I took length times height, and then I assumed these to be 45 degrees and see how they taper. We just pretended that didn't happen. And so I calculated this square and I assume that that one is the same. And so we're removing one square of area. So I took a square this big, seven and a half by seven inches. And I said that we're moving that from the length time side of the whole thing. That's how we got there. Really, really crude. But then we're gonna say with a volume, uh, one inch high. So 475 cubic inches now because it's multiplied by one. The internet tells me that is roughly two gallons. So if our pipe comes down to about here, we have a maximum additional capacity of this high. So every inch equals roughly two gallons, okay? So we're like three and a half inches, maybe. Two, four, six, seven. Let's say seven, three and a half inches, right? And say, what does this get? Like 13, maybe 14 gallons, probably. So we are now over 20. That's pretty darn good. Now, do we want it to come all the way up to here? Probably not, because we're going to start seeing it slosh out or attempt to on just about any type of driving or off-roading. So we're going to want to make sure that that's still relatively low. We'll probably cut a vertical inch off of this to get maybe two more gallons, and we'll just kind of go from there. Also, if there's any fuel in your tank at all, like I have, put on gloves. And if you have like long gloves, get those. You don't want your hands in that gasoline. I'm, I'm really right on the edge of the capacity of this glove with this level of gas in here, but we're okay. I didn't get any on my hands. Okay. So to wrap this up, I'm going to show you what I did because filming it with my hand in the tank wasn't very feasible. So we're going to use, or we did use this thing here, which is a ratcheting pipe or hose cutter very powerful very awesome kind of big for this application getting it to fit through that tiny hole was a little bit of a challenge but i got this in there i got my hand in there and basically i held it kind of like this and i was able to feel where that pipe was and go roughly the distance i wanted to go and then i you know how do you do it <laughs> without being able to see i kind of snake my hand down and then started that ratcheting action. And once it started to apply some sort of pressure on the hose, I went back up, checked it. Now it's kind of in place so I can get my hand back down and so on. Now, the handles of this thing do not like gasoline. They got a little upset with the gasoline so I made sure to wipe it off right away. But let's see what I was able to accomplish. So the first time I cut it, I cut off this much and then I lost it because it fell under that tray. Yes, there's an underside to that tray, apparently. And I cut off that much. Then I decided to go bigger and I cut off this much. So what does that do for us? Well, hold on here. About that much tube. How much is that? Let's see here. Almost four inches, three and a half. 
three and a half inches here. So I'm gonna come down here. This guy here came down to like there-ish. I scratched it. And if we go three and a half inches up, you know what? Let's just do it with the tape measure. So we're gonna draw a line from here up to the nozzle. See how that works? And then at the three and a half inch mark, whoops, sorry. We are right at that rust line, more or less, right in the middle of this rust line, which is right here. So if we go from scratch mark to rust line, we're at just shy of an inch and a half of depth which is three additional gallons. After running it a few times, it turns out to be a little bit closer to two gallons or 25 to 30 additional miles of range. Okay, now all we're going to do is we're gonna make sure to clean up the bolts on our fuel pump, maybe even throw some paint on it just to reduce corrosion a little bit and then put it back in and we are done. That is the whole project. The hardest part is just getting the tank out.